Welcome everybody to the Christian Pork Chop Chronicles, where we are going over every excuse possible made by the Christians as to why they should not be following the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Now, we've been told over 53 times in scriptures that we are to guard the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. It has been told us over and over and over, but I am convinced that over 99% of the people that I talk to have never read scriptures at all. That's what I'm convinced of. I believe that everybody has been spoon-fed this fake, weak religion that everybody calls Christianity, and it is dooming everybody to the pits of hell. Now, let's go over our latest Pork Chop Chronicle. This comes from the Catcher in the Rye Leone. Now, Catcher in the Rye Leone started off yesterday about 18 hours ago, and on this channel, we spend a tremendous amount of time trying to talk to the Christians and try to explain to them that when you read scriptures, that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are the greatest thing ever. They will say, no, Jason, it is grace, grace, grace. We are saved by grace, which that is true. But we have a commitment and we have loyalty to our creator that we need to obey his laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, let's go over the old stinking thinking that comes from being a Christian. And let's see if we can get anybody out of this religion and into a walk with our creator that has them truly finding the road to the kingdom. Okay, this is what they say. Leon, shalom to everyone. I'm not trying to contend or look down on anyone, just expressing my view. There is misinterpretation of grace in the sense that many folks equate grace with not having to move a finger or repent. That seems to be the worst of the mistranslations of grace because it goes against Jesus's commands, not because I say so. Now, again, folks, we are when we're talking about Jesus, everyone will know who Jesus is because we've all been, I guess, hoaxed with a name. But there was no J's in the Hebrew language. The letter J didn't even come out until the 1900s. And so, and it's not in, there's no J sound in the Hebrew language. His name is Yahushua or Yeshua, something very close to that, but it, it's not Jesus. So when we're talking about Yahushua, <clears throat> we're talking about who everyone knows as Jesus. Continuing on. Grace was meant to go along with the words blood covenant, contract testament, conditions set by Jesus. Basically, God wanted to make another contract, a new testament, to give us a much way, better way to pay once and for our, all our sins, especially for non-Jews. Now, that's the crazy thing is because you can tell right out of the gate, our brother Leon has never read scriptures before. When we talk about a covenant, when there is the old covenant, the old covenant is this. If you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your Elohim and you will be our people, my people. Now, the new covenant that you get in Jeremiah, a little bit in Isaiah, and you get, definitely get it in Hebrews 8, is this. If you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your Elohim, and you will be my people. It's the same covenant, and it is the, the only difference between the new covenant is that we have a priest with it. It comes with a perfect priest. It comes with our king, Messiah Yahushua. But there is that is not a sin-free card. That is not something that is, oh, okay, we can go and live as we want to live and we just ask Jesus for forgiveness. It doesn't work like this. So our brother Leon is extremely confused right out of the gate, but it goes on for a long time. Continuing on. So grace was meant to indicate God's enduring love for Jews and non-Jews when deciding to give all of us this opportunity of entering the blood covenant, daily forgiveness, daily repentance, daily learning to forgive others. And this is what the 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 entire theme of, of Brother Leon's uh, writing is, is that's what he thinks it is. It's all about daily forgiveness, daily repentance, daily learning, which are all great things, but you still have a set of ordinances that we are told to keep. We are told to write upon our doorposts. We're told to recite it when we get up, recite it when we go to bed. We're supposed to ingrain it in our, our children's heads. So this is, again, this is the conundrum of Christianity that people believe things like this. And this is the same rhetoric that everyone else believes as well. Many will say, but it's a gift. Of course, it's a gift because Jesus paid for us with his blood, not us. It doesn't mean that we don't have a part of the contract to fulfill. It's a two-sided contract. 
If we keep Jesus' commandments, God will not say to us, I never knew you. No, but Messiah Yahushua will. But here's the gig. Here is the two commandments. This is the Christian's commandments. They don't believe anything in the Old Testament. They believe the, the moral law of the Ten Commandments, but really that's, that's kind of outdated as well. They believe there's two commandments, that you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if we were honest with ourselves and we weren't liars, then if you believe that you love your creator with all your heart, mind, and soul, but you reject his instructions, then we're lying to ourselves, right? Same with our parents. If our parents tell us, don't go out of the house and you leave the house, what are your parents going to be? Are they going to be happy with you? Or are they going to be angry with you? Continuing on. Kindly, I'd like to outline another thing. What enters our mouth won't make us unclean spiritually, as Jesus said. But as Jesus mentioned, it's what comes out from the heart, through our mouth. Kindly, I'm saying God will forgive those who eat whatever they can. Maybe even during Sabbath, even Jesus emphasized how David and his soldiers ate the consecrated bread from the altar when they were hungry. I'm not trying to circumvent the basic requirements of obedience to God, but Jesus, emphasize, but Jesus emphasized this to show that everyone will be judged with different measures because God knows if one's heart is, is spiteful and does things to anger God, or if one's heart is broken and eats certain food without having contempt towards God in their heart. Okay, we have a book in the Torah called Leviticus. And in that book, we have a chapter. And in that chapter, which is chapter 11, we have dietary guidelines. It tells us from the beginning of the chapter to the end of the chapter, what is good food for us? What is not good food for us? The not good food for us will kill us. When you eat pig, Many, many people every single year die from that. They get lots of diseases. That's why you have to cook it and cook it and cook it or else the parasites and the worms will kill you. That's why our creator says, don't eat that. Although it has become the cotton candy of the Christians, that's, that's not what we're supposed to be eating. And if you're eating things that our creator told us not to eat, then you do not love our creator. It's that simple. He goes on, rhetorical question. Would God send people to hell for having eaten pork meat or shrimp or the consecrated bread during Sabbath? Yes, he probably will. If that was your only means of food and you're starving and you're dying, even if anyone's ever read Maccabees, they refused to eat the pig. The entire family got slaughtered for not eating the pig. <laughs> you don't eat this. And why would you be eating shrimp and pork meat and the, he see, this is the problem when you don't read scriptures. The consecrated bread was because David and his soldiers were starving to death. They were on the run and they, were, they literally had no food left. That was the only food the priest had, which was for the priest. But Yah didn't call it as a bad thing. He, he said, okay, these guys are starving. Do what you're going to do, right? It wasn't a bad thing and they weren't eating unclean food. Right, So this is the confusion that we have in Christianity. It's just a mess of confusion. Now, let's continue on with what he says here. Um, let's see. Based on the deed that was, kindly to me at least, it feels that the locust that John the Baptist ate was not a standard set for all Christians as to what to eat or not to eat. But the baptism of water that John performed did seem to me more meaningful when compared to what John ate. Just my view on these things. Shalom to everyone. And again, this is the Christian confusion. When you do not read scriptures, but yet you try to live like you have, John the Baptist ate cling food. The locusts that he ate are cling food. It has jointed arms on it, and you can eat that. It clearly says in Leviticus, those are foods you can eat. So when he's trying to make jokes on this and try to make funnies, He's, he, all he's doing is showing his ignorance with this and it, it's, it's rough. It's really, really rough. So continuing on, I said, this is massive confusion, my friend. Leviticus 11 gives you dietary laws. If you are eating unclean food and not keeping the way of Yahuwah, you will be sent to hell. The entire grace doctrine is full of holes and doesn't jive with scriptures. If you aren't keeping Sabbaths, don't expect the kingdom. If you aren't walking in the laws of Yahuwah, don't expect the kingdom. If you live like the world, taste like the world, smell like the world, then don't expect the kingdom. Let's look at revelations for those who are saved. 
Revelation 14. Here is the endurance of the saints. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and the belief of Yahushua. Messiah Yahushua states that most people don't make the kingdom. Why? Because they are lawless. Enter in through the narrow gate because the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed, which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Clearly, out of our Messiah's mouth, there are few who find it. Continue on. Then he goes further and explains that all these people that think they know him, well, if they aren't keeping the laws of God, Yahuwah, when they, they, then they will be told to go to hell. That is what depart from me means. Matthew 7, not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter into the reign of the Shemaim, but he who is doing the desire of my father in the Shemaim. Many shall say to me on that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not Nabud prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. And then I explained to him, we only have a brief moment in time to get right with our creator. And this is the truth of the scriptures. Thanks for the comment. Much love, my friend. And then he continues on. He says, I understand the strictness that you elaborated on. I wonder why Jesus Christ didn't emphasize the dietary commandment and the circumcision commandment right under the two most important commandments, love thy Lord and love thy neighbor. On the Temple Mount sermon, it will remain a mystery to me until I face the judgment seat. And that's the thing is he's, he's, a, he's a jester here, right? He's joking and he, he gets further on with his jokes a little bit further. But this is, they're laughing at the people that are begging them to try to read scriptures, right? If you loved our creator with all your heart, mind, and soul, you would obey his laws, statutes, and commandments. If you don't care what our creator has to say, you're not going to keep it. And so, yes, he will be, it will be a mystery to him, but it doesn't need to be a mystery to all of you guys. It's simple enough. Read it from the book of generation, gener excuse me, read it from the beginning of the book, from Genesis, all the way through to the end of the book, Revelations, and it's, a, it's all about everything. It's good for all generations, it's all good for creeds, it's all nations, everybody. The laws have never gone away. They have never disappeared. It is the people and Satan that have hidden them, and if people are too lazy to go find them, there's nothing that we can do. Continuing on, he goes, um, on the other hand, overemphasizing the proper eating rules while obscuring the two most important commandments is a better way for us to teach humbleness and compassion. But I suppose that eating kosher will always supersede teaching humbleness and compassion as Jesus taught mainly, right? And he's, this guy is, is just a, 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 a cynic. I remember that verse from the Bible when Jesus said, make sure you eat kosher to enter the narrow gate. The devil also quoted Bible verses to Jesus to twist their meaning and to emphasize something else. Let us teach in love. The humbleness of Christ, his compassion when praying for people, for repentance of unforgiveness, asking daily for our forgiveness. And at the very end, we can also advise the followers of Christ to eat kosher. Is that bad? Shalom to you. Right. And so this is the mixing of just imp it's improper doctrine. This is a mess of, you know, scriptural. Uh, just it's, it's just a mess. Let's continue on. Shalom, my friend. This is my response to him. If you were true about loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, then you would want to do what he asks of us. Imagine saying you loved your parents with all your heart, mind, and soul and disobeying their wishes. Would you truly love them with all your being or are you lying? It isn't just about eating unclean clean foods. It's about obedience to the full set of the laws that we can keep. Obviously, we aren't Levites, so there wouldn't be any slaughterings or temple work, but you can certainly keep the Sabbath, as Yahuwah says, that is a sign between those who are his and those who are of the devil's. We also have commands such as don't drink blood and don't eat the fat. We aren't to have improper weights and measurements. We shouldn't lay with a cycling woman or uncover our children's nakedness. Another commandment told us over 53 times is to guard the laws of Yahuwah. How is being disobedient guarding his laws? And I just, I didn't put the full 53 times, but these are some of these commandments that we go over every Shabbat and it's 53 times. 
You're clearly not guarding the laws of our creator. And this is a commandment that is the largest and biggest commandment in all of scriptures. I promise you, it is, the, it is recited more times than any other commandment at all. It doesn't supersede loving our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul. Because if we did that, then we would obviously want to guard the laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, continuing on. Now, Messiah Yahushua, Jesus, is an arm of Yahuwah. He says, if you love him, keep his commandments. Well, what are his commandments? They are the same as his father's. This is, and then I repeated John 4, 34. Yahushua said unto them, my food is to do the will of, the, of him that sent me and to finish his work. What is his work? Well, his work is the Torah. That is what he gave to us. That is what we have on Mount Sinai, the, the tablets of stone and the, the, all the laws that continuing on. John 5, 27 through 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the father, which has sent me. Continuing on. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Yahushua answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. I could quote Messiah for a long time. He kept the laws of his father. And again, he clearly says that those not keeping the laws will be sent to hell. It is, not, it is about obedience to our creator and walking in his ways. And again, I, I requote Matthew 7, depart from me, you who work lawlessness. And then I said, John clearly speaks as to those who are saved in Revelation 14. Here is the endurance of the Kodeshium. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and the belief of Yahushua. So he continues on. And this is where you can find that the ignorance is catching up with the jokes, right? Shalom, shalom, food for thought, which will help maybe others who stumble on dietary rules while following Jesus Christ. I will probably never understand why no one told John the Baptist to go to the temple and keep the Mosaic law instead of living in the desert and eating locusts. As I mentioned in my previous comment, all those priests that from the temple, oh, I'm sighing now. Why weren't I, they able to properly explain to John the Baptist as you explained to me the importance of the Mosaic law, the dietary rules to save John the Baptist from going to hell? We know that John the Baptist didn't have any relationships with women and his deadly sin is not about other things except for sins that you righteously specified, breaking the dietary laws and the lack of worship in the temple. Now, he could have been funny if he wasn't completely wrong on this because John the Baptist kept the laws, statutes and commandments. He preached the commandments. He preached keeping the way and getting rid of the sin in your life. That's what he preached. And when you do not read scriptures, you come out there and this is all a joke to you. And it is a complete joke. And when you, just a second, sorry about that. That's my kid out there on a quest. Continuing on. Maybe John the Baptist would have had a chance to go to heaven. I can't understand why not even Jesus Christ tried to save John from going to hell. I will have to really forget about this deception called grace as you brightly explained and I will have to focus on the Mosaic law and I will have to find maybe a temple, maybe an imaginary one. If you can advise me that it's okay to do so because without a temple, we cannot keep the Mosaic law to the letter. Every Hebrew believer had to go to the temple with grain offerings, wine offerings, etc. According to the Levit Leviticus rules, I'm very grateful that you opened my eyes. Please let me know what to do about an imaginary, going to an imaginary holy temple until they build a third temple, because otherwise I am doomed. I will keep you in my prayers, and in the meantime, slow and may God have mercy on all of us. All right, so this is, I, I guess I'll just read what, read what I put there, and then I will continue up with this. My friend, John wasn't violating dietary laws. As cynical as you are, these are the laws from Leviticus 11. Nothing wrong with locust. And then I... Then, I will, I will put this out there and you guys can read this if you want. This is, I don't want this videos to be very too long, but these are the Levitical laws, right? Starting in Leviticus 11, this is our dietary law. And just because it's in Leviticus doesn't mean that it's only for the priest. It doesn't mean you have to have a priest to obey it. These are the laws of what you eat, right? Now, right under here, right here on 19, Night 20, all, ins, all flying insects that creep on all fours is an abomination to you. 
Only these you do eat of every insect that creeps on all fours, that which have jointed legs above their feet with which to leap on the earth. Do grasshoppers leap on the earth? Do locusts leap on the earth? Do they have jointed legs? Absolutely, right? So John the Baptist was not breaking Torah. He was keeping Torah. And this is the problem when you are in Christianity is that you're being led into the depths of hell and you will never find your way out because you're sitting there going off. Continuing on. So as much as you love the jokes, jokes aside, I strongly urge you to read scripture so you don't fall to ignorance. We only have one shot to make the kingdom and I don't think you will be cracking jokes when Messiah tells you to depart from him because you worked and joked at lawlessness. John kept the laws as well as Messiah Yahushua. And what temple do you speak of? You need to keep the seventh day Sabbath, but there is no Torah law to go to the temple. But it's all in that good book that you may want to slowly read through. The Levitical laws that we had, which we cannot keep, the, the Levitical ones that deal with priests, that deal with sacrifice, that deal with things of that nature, those are ones we can't keep. Now, if you're a man, you're not going to be keeping the Torah laws of a woman. If you're a woman, there's Torah laws of men that you would not be keeping, certain things, right? This is the way it goes. This is why you need to be astute in all of this. And then I was reading Ezekiel yesterday, and this popped out because we're proofreading scriptures. We're actually literally going through scriptures and going through line by line, jot by jot, going through this. When I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall certainly die, and you have not spoken to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked one shall die in his wickedness, and his blood I require at your hand. But when you have warned the wicked to turn away, turn from his way, and he has not turned from his way, he shall die in his wickedness. But you have delivered your being. Shalom and much love to you. And again, we have our jokester, Leon. And then he goes, I was honestly trying to emphasize the mixture of contradictory ideas that you preach. I'm not saying that you'll go to hell or anything else, but I'm just saying that you might get many people derailed from focusing on daily prayer, daily repentance, and daily forgiveness of others. Please read this from Leviticus 2. Hopefully you'll understand that you can't fully keep the Mosaic law if you don't have a temple and a high priest who will take your offering to the altar of God. Right. Guys, this is why we have a Melchizedek priest. This is why we have Messiah Yahushua. That is why his blood sacrifice for us is that priest, right? We go to our creator in prayer and we ask in the name of Yahushua, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahushua. Please don't use Jesus. That's not his name. If you guys know the name, please use the right name. And then he continues on, he quotes in, uh, I think, what is this, right, Exodus or Leviticus. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, one of whom shall take it from his handful of uh, from it, his handful of fine flour and oil, and with all frankincense, uh, and with all frankincense. And the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. Guys, there are 160 laws that we can keep. It is obvious when you read scriptures that you're not going to be able to fulfill the duties of the Levites. We aren't Levites, right? We don't have Levitical priests. We don't have a temple. We don't have any of that stuff out there. So... We'll continue on here. And then I continue on. I said, we are supposed to keep Levitical laws. Remember strange fire? And he, he, didn't, he didn't know what strange fire was. Strange fire is when the sons of Aaron went and they probably in a drunken stupor did something that they were not supposed to do and Yah burned them up. And Aaron was not to grieve for them. He wasn't to mourn. And they made a tragic mistake. And right after that, Yah made commands that said, if you are in the Levitical side of this, if you're doing the priesthood stuff, don't be drinking on this. And I said, just because you can't. And I said, 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now, this is from the book that the Christians believe in, right? They believe in the New Testament. They don't believe in the Old Testament. They believe in the New it says clearly in the first John 5, 3, that we keep his commandments. If you love God, just because you can't keep Levitical laws, there are 160 other laws you can keep. Laws that will keep you alive and laws that won't make you Torahless. The Christian way is the road to hell. You are on the wide path to destruction. Brothers and sisters, please read the scriptures very slowly. Your souls are at risk. All I can do is send you the message and the message has been sent. Shalom and much love to you. 
And again, I quoted John Revelation 14. If you won't listen to me, maybe John will help. Here's the endurance of the Kodeshim. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and the belief of Yahushua. Not keeping the commandments isn't guarding them. And Messiah Yahushua says, those not keeping them will be told to depart to, he to hell because he doesn't know you, right? It continues on. Shalom, kindly, if you advise others to keep Leviticus partially, only the diet dietary rules, but you say then that the other offerings are not part of the mandatory Mosaic law, hence we can skip them until we get a temple. And you mentioned that strange holy fire, kindly. Why, kindly, why, why trying to get people confused? What benefit is it to you? This has no benefit to me. This has a benefit to the very, very small majority of people that will ever come out of Christianity and will ever start seeking uh, the, the following the right path of our creator, right? This isn't, a, this isn't anything that benefits Boss Clan or benefits me at all. We don't take donations here. We don't have any videos that are monetized. No way, shape or form do we make any sense at all from this ever. We do this because we love our creator and we love you guys that are out there and which is why we spend enormous amounts of time doing what we are doing, trying to find those last people who are willing to seek our creator. And Brother Leon isn't. Okay, continue on. Of course, Jesus' commandments are not grievous, but you mix up contradictory ideas back and forth, making statements about not having to go to the temple, etc. Again, guys, this is people who are unlearned, unskilled in these scriptures. They just don't realize that the Levitical side was from when Yah was was with us. Our creator was with the people of Yisrael. He was amongst the people of Yisrael. And the only way that he would stay among them is if they were cling and they were able to absolve the evil that they were doing. And that was by blood sacrifices. He's no longer with us like this. He doesn't dwell in a cloud by day and a fire by night. He dwells with us if you are willing to find him. But it's not like that. Continuing on. This is not what God's preaching should be about. The truth is in the words of Jesus Christ, all the New Testament, the New Covenant. And to say that Jews were not required to go to the temple to keep the Mosaic law? Yeah, back in the day when Yah was dwelling with his people. It is extremely hard to go back and forth with these guys when they have never read the book that they're arguing. And that is why <laughs> every single day this happens. And I haven't given up yet. But sometimes I feel like I, I feel like I should. That's why I'm saying you should have people, you should help people not to stumble over dietary rules to seek salvation of their soul that needs spiritual food. That is the food Jesus talked about when telling his disciples, I have food that you don't know nothing about. I don't think he said don't know nothing about. It sounds kind of redneckish. Kindly, that's the food that matters as Jesus spoke. And I'm telling you this in love to help you come out of the trap of the Pharisees. They were speaking all kinds of rules and Jesus chastised them for burdening people just like when they accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath day. Shalom, I'm trying to help. Okay, the Pharisees and Sadducees did not keep the Torah of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They kept the oral Torah, which is about 200 other books, including mysticism. Judaism is mysticism. If you get into the Kabbalah and all of this tree of life that they talk about, this is new age occultic stuff that has it basically plagued society. The Sadducees and Pharisees were not obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments. The entire process of them washing their hands before they ate was a tradition of men. There is no Torah law anywhere that says we need to wash our hands before we eat. That is what Messiah was trying to, to do. Then I continue on. Since you have never read the scriptures from cover to cover, at some level, I got to give up. The laws of Yahuwah are for all peoples all places, all creeds, and they are for everyone with eyes to see and ears to hear. Here's the first 10 laws for you to consider. Tell me which ones aren't good and why, and I will go through them with you guys. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and women should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's laws, statutes, and commandments. And then I said, here's the next 10. Which ones are not good enough for you? Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrium. 
Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. The confusion comes from the religion of Christianity. Let's start there. And then I gave him. Here's the next set. Which of these is too much for you? Do you drink blood or like to do evil things? Where's your guidelines for life? Commandment 21. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he restore, shall restore it five times. The laws for criminals. Do not lie with animals. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless or widow. Do not change your brother's interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false reports. Continuing on, do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Don't mention any pagan names. Do not cook your goat in its mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person. Do not use this perfume on a normal person. All the Levitical stuff. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. And this guy, in his jokes, in his jokes, he discard. In his jokes, he goes, don't give up, man. Jesus is the truth, the way and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And that is true. But nobody comes to the Father without the Torah either. That is very true. It, it's a two-lane highway and both cars have to be on both lanes of the road to make this happen. This is the key that will help you unlock the mystery of the spiritual food. I understand that you feel that I didn't read the Bible fully. I only wanted to help others see the traps and the contradictory ideas you spoke about. If you knew about the mandatory temple offerings and about the high priest, you should not be confused about it. Shifting back and forth from one subject to another will not work. I won't blame you for being partially confused about Leviticus, but if salvation is the most important thing for you, I suggest you seek the spiritual food from Jesus Christ, not from misleading people online to derail them from daily prayers, daily repentance, and wasting time with bickering. Shalom, and I hope you find time for prayer. Now, this is Brother Leon, He's the one that started with the entire bickering online as he came at this. And all I've been trying to do, which I spent the entire day doing, guys, this, this takes a long time. And Brother Leon is one of many people. We across five different YouTube channels, uh, uh, Odyssey, Rumble. It never, ever ends. And I end this with no confusion, brother. The laws are for all peoples, uh, all times. The message has been sent. And the message will still always go out. And guys, there is a problem with Christianity. There's a problem with lawlessness. It is a problem with the evil that Christians are able to do. If you decide that the laws, statutes, and commandments are not for you and that they don't matter, then all of the commandments that I just read right up here uh, t t take no bribes. So if you don't have a guideline, if you don't have a moral guideline in life, then you, will, you don't have this line. Right. And people say, oh, I'm a Christian. That scares me more than anything, because I know Christians have no guidelines for rules. If people are a Torah keeper, that puts them up a little more step, in my opinion, because they know that if they rip a me off or if they do me damage or if they hurt my my family, then that is Yah will judge them. Christians don't know anything about this because they have been spoon fed all of this guys. And so as we go back into the world we are living when we are trying to get the salvation trying to find the way back it's not by sitting here in this pig pen it is not sitting here eating swine it is not sitting here living outside of the laws statutes and commandments of our creator the covenant path that small narrow gate is a gate that is hard to find and i would like to end that with talking about this little tiny narrow gate Right, because most people don't understand it. If if the Christians have this book, which is called the the New Covenant, and this you, it starts with Matthew, in this right here, it very clearly says, "Enter in through the narrow gate." What is the narrow gate? 
narrow gate is Messiah, right? Narrow gate is Messiah. That's our choices in life. It is the way that our path that it goes. It's keeping the Torah. If you are keeping Torah, you have entered in that narrow gate because the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. And, and, and there are many who enter through it. Okay, let me reread that. Enter in through the narrow gate because the gate is wide and wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in through it because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed, which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So guys, with that, I'm going to leave this. This is another episode of the Christian Pork Chop Chronicles. This is number two. And I hope you guys have a good day. And I hope you're seeking our creator where he's able to be found. Much love.